Okay. Uh, this talk is going to be about trying to show using the epsilon delta uh, method that uh, any quadratic function is continuous at a, at all points in in the real numbers. So here is a quadratic function. Fx is ax squared plus bx plus c. A, B, C are all real numbers and A is non-zero. P is any real number. I am not calling it, it C just because C is used here. Okay. And I want to show that the limit as X approaches P of Fx is F of P. Okay. So this essentially handles all limits for quadratic functions. Okay. And, and the way I am going to try to do this, I am going to try to exhibit a winning strategy for the prover in the game, the epsilon delta game, where the skeptic picks epsilon the prover picks delta and and so on okay so in general what 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 does a winning strategy comprise the prover has to choose delta in terms of epsilon in terms of epsilon right because the skeptic picks epsilon first and the prover has that knowledge when picking delta and we are going to describe how the prover can pick delta in terms of epsilon and this is one such strategy the prover can can use now I want to say something, if you want to actually find sort of the best delta that the prover can use, that's, that, is not that is not possible without using the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula uses square roots, and we don't know square roots exist until we've proven that square map is continuous, and this is sort of, we need to do this before that. So we are not, we're not actually trying to find the best delta, that's not possible without actually already assuming in some sense that these functions are continuous. We just find something that works, and and this is one such thing. Now, the, the reason why the idea behind coming up with this is we start off by assuming that delta is less than or equal to one, and then sort of and then we work out another constraint on delta, which says delta is less than or equal to this. And if we satisfy both these constraints, then uh, then then it works. Then uh, then this delta works with that. So now instead of one, you could have picked another constant here and you would have got another expression slightly different okay you would have got something else here instead of the absolute value okay so the specific claim okay so sets so, up so in order to show that this strategy works so earlier we were just trying to show this limit is, is this value but now we have a more concrete claim right we are claiming this strategy works what does that mean what are we claiming hmm? Claim that is that one if the other one is greater than one or no? I mean, what are we claiming about the x and the fx things? So if x is something, then fx is something, right? Yeah. So what's this, what's the claim we are making? X is within c minus. Not c now. The point is p. Okay. So. B minus delta B. Yeah, so if, if uh, X minus P is between 0 and delta, right? Actually, we can allow X equal to P. So you don't actually have to put the 0 less than because we are actually proving that the value also agrees. But if you just had a limit definition, you would have to put that here. So I'm just putting that there for, for completeness sake. Okay, then the FX is within epsilon distance of FP. Okay. <coughs> So what's the proof of this claim? Well, how would you start out? You'd start out by trying to simplify fx minus fp, uh, and you'll use this, and in the process you'll use that delta is uh, this thing, and then you try to simplify and, and try to get epsilon. So yeah, I already did the first few steps. I wrote down this, I did the basic uh, cancel the c, and brought it here, and then I wrote x square minus p square as x minus p times x plus p. And so I was able to split this expression like this. Okay, so what do we do now? So what, what do we get now? Well, this x minus p is less than delta, right? And delta is less than, so this is less than delta times x 
Okay, let's let's just do this step by step. Okay, so this one we'll we'll try to use that this is less than delta. Okay, what about this one? What will you do on this one? On this piece? Uh, Let me just simplify this a bit more. So this is x minus p. This is the tricky part. So this is you write it a times x minus p plus twice a p plus p. So the idea is you want to get the x minus p part out. This is the small part, right? This is the part which is approaching zero, mm -hmm. and this is the, the remaining part, which is big. Okay, now we can use what we can use the triangle inequality on this. So we get okay, now what? We, you know the absolute value of x minus p. It's less than. So, okay, so now this part, this thing, a x minus p, this is absolute a value of a times absolute value x minus p, and we know absolute value x minus p is less than delta, right? And uh, delta is less than equal to one. Okay, so this part we can just know that this is a uh, less than just absolute value a. Okay, and uh, and this part's already positive. Okay, and uh, this thing on the other hand we know this is less than delta. But now for this delta we use the fact that the delta is less than equal to this piece. So this is less than delta times mod a delta plus mod 2a p plus b. Okay. Hmm. Now this delta, what do we say? This delta, the outer delta, we use that it's less than equal to what? The epsilon over. Okay. Times. What about this thing? This delta, what do you use that this is less than equal to? The inner delta? One. Okay, so what have we done? We have started out, I should write here, I used the triangle inequality here. We started out with absolute value fx minus fp and then we did a chain of steps. Each step was either equal to or less than equal to or less than, right? Equal to, equal to, equal to, equal to. Here you had less than, equal to. Here you had less than. And then again, uh, less than, equal to and equal to. And so in the process, you, you never went down, right? You always went up and there was one step where you strictly went up. So overall, we'll get that this thing is less than epsilon. Okay, which is what we wanted to prove. Okay.